Good morning. It's good to see you out on this beautiful Sunday morning. We have a great day to come to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ together. We're excited that you're here. If you're new and among us, we want to welcome you. I pray that you will experience the presence of our sweet Holy Spirit of God and uh, worship our Lord together with us today as we worship Lord and Savior. If you're new among us and wouldn't mind, fill out the prayer for age of the bulletin. Just give me a name and number or email or whatever. Uh, I'd just like to pray for you. And so if you wouldn't, wouldn't mind filling it out, just drop it in the offering plate. We're glad that you're with us today. I know that there are many that are out today. Uh, this is Memorial or Labor, Labor Day weekend, isn't it? And uh, so there are people that are gone, but we're excited that you're here and we've come together to worship our Lord. Let's uh, first of all take a moment of silence and pray for those in Odessa and Midland uh, on behalf of the shooting yesterday. I'm sure many of you have heard about that. Let's take a moment of silence and have a word of prayer for those precious families out there, okay? Our Heavenly Father, as we humble our hearts before you today, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come into this place this morning into your very midst, that, Lord, we could worship you, praise your holy name, and thank you even for all the things that are going on around us, Lord. Father, help us to just rest and be still in you. Father, you are a sovereign God that you know best. And, that, Father, we pray for that precious, precious community out in Texas this morning. We pray for all those families that have been touched, Lord, by death itself. Lord, may it be an eye-opener for us to realize our need to just be prepared at all moments in this life. That, Father, we can look forward to being with you throughout eternity. And so, Father, we pray your blessings upon them in their time of despair, in their time of, of grief. May you be with them and watch over them, and may you comfort them, Lord. Father, we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray for Calvary Church, our sister church this week. Uh, choir practice will be at 5 o'clock. Deacons will meet at 4 o'clock. The Baptist women's meeting is postponed until next Sunday. Business meeting will be after our uh, Wednesday evening prayer time and Bible study. Uh, Fellowship Warriors for Christ Boys Ministries, grade 1 through 6, uh, will begin this Wednesday. They kind of had an introduction this past Wednesday. And... Uh, if you have a, a little boy that's between uh, in fir between first grade and sixth grade, you come. I know you'll enjoy that. Uh, Brother Robert, some of the guys, Brother Robert brought some pizzas, and they had a great introductory time, and it's going to be a great ministry for our young boys here in the community. Deacon training, uh, don't forget that for our deacon body and for those that maybe are feeling led toward that position. Uh, deacon training will be... Uh, September the 16th from 6.30 to 8.30. Al Dotson will facilitate the meeting and Andy McDonald will lead in the evangelism portion of it. Don't forget our upcoming homecoming uh, will be September the 22nd. We'll be celebrating 70 years and uh, that is quite an accomplishment that God has had a ministry here and all the lives that he's touched. You be sure to reach out to those that have been a part of this church family uh, throughout the years and invite them to come and let us see uh, one another come together as a family of God. Brother James Harley will be bringing her a message that morning. Don't forget our open prayer time at 9 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. Uh, we'd love to have you to visit with us and pray with us. And don't forget our ongoing ministries. We are always uh, thanking you for your support in that, for those that are volunteering for that, our box tops for education, our shoebox ministry and our uh, uh, Hope Food Pantry, Bags of Hope Food Pantry. Our scripture verse of the week, Do ye thus requit the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father and that hath brought thee, bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Deuteronomy 32, verse 6. Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask God to bless our time together again. Our Heavenly Father, once again, as we approach your throne, we just want to thank you for the reading of your word this morning. 
and ask your blessings upon it. We want to thank you for those that you've led in this direction. Father, thank you for each one that is here today. Father, we pray that you will minister to our hearts for the very need that we have, that, Lord, we might leave this place being the salt and the light to the earth you'd have us to be, to our community, to our families, to our friends. Father, that we might invite others to experience your love and forgiveness on behalf of the sacrifice that you made through Jesus Christ by the way of the cross and the blood that was shed. Father, we thank you for the cleansing power of the blood this morning. We thank you for your watch care over us. We thank you for the many blessings in this life, Father. Father, I thank you for each one that's here now and I ask you to bless those that are playing the instruments, to bless our brother Ronnie as he leads the choir, bless the choir, bless the congregation. May you prepare our hearts, Lord, for the breaking of the bread. Father, we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, for it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday. Anybody have a birthday or anniversary? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, praise the Lord. Let's stand, make everybody feel welcome. Let them know that you're excited about them being in the house of the Lord to worship the Lord with you this morning.
morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's all stand and turn our hymn books to 547. Don't forget to ask somebody to join, come to church next Sunday. <laughs> Song uh, five eighty one.
14. Fifty-three.
all right? This is your time now, Lord. Use me, carry me, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hope your hearts are ready for the breaking of the bread. I do want to mention, as you're turning with me to the book of Ephesians this morning, uh, it was wonderful to see our Sunday school number back up. And even though this was a uh, uh, weekend, long weekend for a lot of people, we had a good number in Sunday school. So let's continue to uh, see our Sunday school number rise. And if you're not a part of the Sunday school program, you come, I know you'd be blessed by being in a Sunday school class. And we thank each of you teachers. And I didn't mention as well, next Sunday morning, we'll be baptizing. Uh, I think there's five of them. And so uh, we praise the Lord for that. And uh, you come and, and be a part of that next Sunday morning. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians this morning. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. I uh, had two full cups of strong black coffee during Sunday school hour. And uh, so they didn't know if I was just getting ready to get wired up or whether I was just going to preach a long sermon this morning. But uh, we'll just ask God what he wants from us. So let's stand in reverence to the holy word of God this morning. Begin reading in verse 8. Just read a couple, of three verses. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Let's pray, please. Our Heavenly Father, as we humble our hearts before you once again, we just want to thank you, Lord. Father, we want to ask your blessings upon the reading of your word. I want to ask, Lord, that you'd take me and use me this morning as your vessel. I plead on behalf of the blood this morning, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would hide me, that we might see you this morning, that we might hear your voice, Lord. Father, that you might penetrate our hearts, that you have prepared us by removing all those things in the world that surround us that take us away from you and your love. Father, I pray that you administer to us this morning. Father, I pray you administer to that heart that's out there that maybe has never surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, that may need to come this morning and ask you to forgive them and just place their trust in you by the way of the cross and the blood that was shed and invite you to be Lord of their life. That they might experience the good and great God that you are. That they might experience the blessings you have in store for them. Father, those of us that have already done that want to thank you right now for all the many blessings you've given us. Father, thank you for allowing us this comfortable and sweet place to come into to meet with you and to gather together as your family. Father, may your blessings be upon it all. And we'll give you the praise and glory for it all. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so good, isn't he? Isn't God good to you? Amen. God is so good. A few weeks ago, we learned the difference uh, between... Knowing something about somebody and knowing them. And I'm sure those of you that were here recall that message. We talked about that you can learn about people by picking up a book, such as this book, and reading about them and learning about them, but that's still not like knowing them. And we learn that that difference in knowing about someone and knowing someone was the amount of time that we spend with somebody. We know that for a fact. 
We also learned last week the difference between being spiritually dead and being spiritually alive. And we said that if you were spiritually dead, that you live just like the rest of the world, according to the first few verses, first six verses of, of chapter 2 here in Ephesians. That you live just like the rest of the world, that you weren't any different, that you done things that those of the world do. That you were not only that one of the world and no different, but you followed the ways of evil. And, and that you were enslaved by your sin. And we were all like that according to the word of God at one time before we surrendered our lives and our hearts to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ made us new. But being spiritual alive, in verse 4, he says, Because God loved you, and because God loved me, because God loved everybody, he quickened us, he made us alive. He brought us into union with the Heavenly Father. And it was through the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, it was by the righteousness of God himself in Jesus Christ that you and I have that right to come before the Father in that union that he raised us up to be different, and not just to be different, but to make a difference. And he sealed us by the Holy Spirit. And so he says here, you and I being his workmanship, you and I being those that have been made alive, those that have given their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ, he says, and we talked about it last week real briefly, that we're noisemakers. We make a lot of noise. We make a lot of noise with our thanksgiving. We offer God all this thanks for the many blessings that he's given us. We offer not only our noise, but we stay hungry continuously for hunger and thirst for the word of God. And then that we, if we're not spiritually dead, if we're made alive again, we should see evidence within our lives of that spiritual growth. And so being spiritually alive, we bear a testimony that praises God for the riches of his grace that we bear testimony of his kindness in loving one another. And so in verses 8 through 10, we kind of read between the lines and we find out that we've been bought and that we have been made or that we're being made and then that we're established. And that's what God wants to talk to you and I about this morning, that we have been bought and that we are either being made or have been made, and we are established. Being bought means simply that Jesus Christ, he, he left the portals of glory, that being God himself in spirit, and manifested himself in man and came to a hell-bent world because he loved you and I. But I want you to know this morning, we need to realize something. One of the, as he said, it's a gift of God. One of the gifts of God is that we've been delivered from hell, being a believer in Jesus Christ, trusting by the way of the cross. Amen. The primary purpose, the scripture says here, and throughout the Bible, is that God left the portals of glory to come to earth that we might continue the word of God to share the riches of his glory. That we might share who God is. That we might let others know and, and they know through our lives. But the fact of the matter was that he left the portals of glory. He left and laid his crown aside. He came to the earth. He became a man. He died for our sins. And he made us alive in Jesus Christ. What is Christ doing in us? What is Christ doing in your life right now? The Bible teaches us that he gives us three tools. Now, I know there's more than three, but we want to talk about three just briefly this morning. He gives us three tools to equip ourselves with in becoming or being established for that work in which he has called us to do, and that is to share the riches of his glory. The first tool he gives us is the word of God. The word of God, how precious it is. It means that we are to read, we're to meditate, we're to feed upon it. We're to spend time with the word of God. Spend time with the Lord. Because spending time with the Lord, it cleanses us. Have you ever felt that cleansing power that God gives you when you get with him and you ask him for this forgiveness of that muck and mire that you had in your life or, or heart? 
I remember the night that I gave my life to Jesus Christ here, and I, I felt the cleanness that God brought. And as he brought that cleanness, we began to realize that we are a different person. We're a new creation. And so it not only cleanses us, but it nourishes us. And then prayer. We need prayer. That's the second tool that God gives us. Prayer is that tool which the Holy Spirit releases the power of for you and I to live the life that God's called us to live. So he gives us the tool of the word of God. He gives us the word of prayer. And then he gives us the tool of something that we really don't care much about, and that's suffering. And you say, that don't sound right, Brother Lynn. Yes, he gives us the tool of suffering. He gives it to us for a reason. He gives us the tool of suffering to help us come back to where we need to get to sometimes. Because without suffering, we would go along this path of not realizing our real need for the Lord Jesus Christ. So he gives us the word of God to meditate upon, to feed upon, to cleanse us, to nourish us. He gives us the power of prayer. And through prayer, he releases the power of God himself within us to live the life according to how he has called us and what he is doing in us and wants to do through us. Until you and I are ready, ready for what? Ready to be used by the Lord. I want to ask you that question this morning. Are you ready to be used by the Lord? Now, some of you might say, I'm being used by the Lord. And I know that some of you are. But I want you to ask yourself a question. Am I being used by the Lord? You say, Brother Lynn, I've been in church since I was 18 years old. Some of you might say, Brother Lynn, I gave my heart to the Lord when I was five or six years old. I've been a Christian for a long time. What do you mean am I being used by the Lord? Let me tell you something and share something with you God gave me, friends. Do you know that Modus, Modus, <laughs> Modus, Moses spent 40 years before God used him? Do you realize that God took 40 years of that man's life to establish him, to get him ready for the use, for the glory of God, to share the riches of God's glory. Do you remember the man Joseph that was sold by his brothers and went to Egypt? God took 13 years in that man's life to get him established to enter the throne to be in second to the Pharaoh. Do you remember King David? King David was anointed as a youth. You young people that are here, you can come and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ right now and start this process knowing that Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all sin, make you whole, and deliver you. But King David gave his heart and life to the Lord when he was young. He was anointed as a youth, but it wasn't until years later that he was put on the throne. So the point being here is where are we in our walk? Is God still preparing you? Do you realize the importance of those three tools that God uses to equip you and I? Do you realize the importance of the word of God? And I know men in here can say, yes, I do. I know how important the word of God is. Do you realize the importance of being that you need to spend time with the Word of God? The Word of God is Jesus Christ himself. Spending time with the Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word came and dwelt among us. Spending time with him. The Word of God. How precious it is. And what's been said over and over and over. It's soul food to you and I spiritually as children of Christ. The Word of God is so vital to our lives. The Word of God is so vital in being a part of that one of three tools. And maybe there's more. I'm sure there, there are. But that very important part of a vital tool that God gives us in equipping us to get us ready to establish us. And then we take the power of prayer. And many of you know how powerful prayer is. I firsthand know. I firsthand know. 
I don't know, I'm sure that many of you do, but I get to experience the power of prayer every week. I get to experience the power of prayer every day because I have people praying for me. And if you're not praying for me, pray for me, please. I need your prayers. We all need one another's prayers. We're to be the loving family that God's called us to be and the power that God releases through the power of prayer is amazing. It can cause us to overcome bad thoughts. It can cause us to not go where we should not go. It can cause us to not do things we know we should not do. When we pray and ask God for this power that's within us being the Holy Spirit of God. So he's given us the word of God. He's given us the power of the spirit. And he releases that power within us when we pray and ask God out of sincerity and live our lives accordingly to the word of God. And then the suffering. Sometimes it's just a cycle, isn't it? I thought about that in my own life. And I thought about that as I thought about these men's lives. And over and over there was this suffering. I think about Joseph especially. It seemed like over and over, just one thing happened after another. Over 13 years, he was a child of God. He is a, a, a type of Jesus Christ himself in the Bible. But he suffered over and over and over. And then one day, God had him ready. God had him ready, ready for his service. Are you being of service to the Lord today? Are you one of those who are just in the process? Well, let me share something with you. If you're still in the process, don't fret. God wants you to know he just wants you to be patient. Be patient with his word. Be patient in waiting upon those prayers that maybe haven't gotten answered yet. Just be patient. God knows best. Even in the time of suffering, the time of need, God knows best. And he knows what he's doing in equipping you to become who he wants you to be. And he wants every single one of you, every single one of you from the smallest and youngest of our boys and girls in here to the oldest man and woman in here. He wants every single one of us to become of use in him and to be established. To finish that work that he talks about in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. That he started a good work in you. And what he started in you, he will complete. And you can take that to the bank, friends. If you'll just live by him, if you'll just take those three tools and abide by the word of God and stay close to him, stay connected to him, and learn of him, if you'll allow the spirit of the power of prayer to be released in you by the God he is that lives in you, and if you will take the suffering and realize God is molding me. God's making me ready. God's got a day of waiting for me that I'm going to step out on the platform and I'm going to do just what God wants me to do to bring glory to the riches of his glory. To praise God for who God is. You see, this isn't about you and me. This isn't about our children. This is about a holy and a righteous heavenly father, God himself that you and I are going to spend eternity with in the presence of this holy God. Are you ready for that? I was sharing with our Sunday school class this morning. I'm sure that those people in Texas that got shot by somebody just driving down the road had no idea that they were going to go into eternity yesterday. I'm sure of that. Just like this morning, you and I have no assurance of knowing whether we're going to go out into eternity today or not. And I told our Sunday school class, I said, you know, of the things that we might could learn from that, remember this. If for nothing else, it ought to be a reminder to us that we should always, always be prepared. Amen. And that's regardless of where we are in life. That's regardless of whether you've just given your heart and life to Jesus Christ and you've just stepped into this being adopted by the, family, by, by the Lord Jesus Christ and become a part of the family of God? 
Are you in the process? You may be a, a, a year old Christian or you're a two year old Christian or you're a 10 year old Christian. And some of you might be 40 years old, but it might be that it's right now your time that God has you ready to be established, to stand on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ, to stand up and be bold about the word and the truth of God's word. And to share with people about the love and forgiveness of God. Oh, my friends, there's an opportunity for us. There's so many people out there that are in need of that. And it might just be that it's your time. But my friends, listen to me this morning. If you're more busy about doing your own thing than you are God's own thing, you're doing the wrong thing. If you're more busy about doing what you enjoy more than you do about what God is establishing you to become or be, you're doing the wrong thing. And you need to turn around. And that's the grace of God. God gives us his grace, that gift of grace, the gift of blessing, of forgiveness, just being one of the blessings that God gives us. Forgiveness. That we can come to God and just lay our lives on the altar. Say, God, I've messed up. God, I'm not where I belong. God, I'm not who I ought to be. God, I don't know what you're doing with me, but I know that you're working in me. And if he's working in you, just be patient. Young people, listen to me this morning. Give your lives to Christ now. Let Christ begin this work in you. Let Christ establish you. You know that some of the things that I've really thought about here, is uh, I, I thought about it, and I said, well, maybe that's not true, but it's a good thought, is that the younger that we give our hearts to the Lord, the less he will have to do with us in establishing us to become what he wants us to become. Isn't that right? Oh, yes. The earlier age we give our hearts and life to Jesus, and the more involved we get with the three tools that God gives us, that being the Word of God, that being the, word, the, the power of prayer, and that being suffering itself, the quicker we can become that person that will be established for the sharing of the riches of God's glory. And my friends, I want to see, share something with you. You can't do anything better in this whole life than becoming that established person for the Lord God. How wonderful. How great. What Christ done for us, what Christ is doing in us, that Christ can work through us. Have you trusted the finished work of Jesus Christ? Have you invited him to be Lord of your life? Or are you still spiritually dead? Is Christ working through you? Are you enjoying the liberty that Jesus Christ has given you? Or still bound by the habits of the old life in the graveyard of sin? Only you know that. No, my friends, listen. Not only you know that. May we be enlightened this morning. People around us know that. Our lives are evidence of who we are as to where we are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our lives are evidence of what we think the most of. Our lives are evidence of what we do the most for the most. Whether it be glory to ourselves and the pleasures that we like and enjoy with the carnal thinking that we have in the old nature or being recreated being that brand new person and living for Christ and wanting to bring glory to God and praise God. Do you know when we get to heaven, we talked about getting to heaven this morning. Did you know that when we get to heaven, what you're going to do? You're going to worship God. We better learn to do that down here. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise God throughout eternity for the riches of his glory, for his grace, for all these many blessings, these heavenly blessings that he has given us a part of in being the adopted children of Christ, the inheritance that we have, and all that we're going to get to experience, how wonderful it's going to be to be in a place to where there's no sin. Is Christ working through you. If a child of God raised and seated with Christ, practice your position for him. Practice your position. As we went to the Middle East on our Holy Land tour this past March, 
I was sharing with someone the other day about Anna, our guide. And I said she was a Messianic Jew. But she wasn't only a Messianic Jew. She was a practicing Messianic Jew. She had spent time in the Word. I believe in all my heart she understood the power of prayer that could be released. And I don't have any indication of the type of suffering that she's been through, but I'm sure it's been there. But God has established her in the position of bringing glory to himself by sharing the riches of his glory in what she does. Now, that don't mean everybody needs to be a guide. But it does mean that everybody needs to come under the lordship of Jesus Christ and ask God to work in you mightily to release these things in you, to read, meditate, feed upon the word of God that you might be ready when God gets you ready to be used for his glory. Be the created life to the glory of God he has made you. You've been bought. You've been made. And some of you have been established. And some of you need to wait on being established because God is constantly working through us all. It takes a lot of years sometimes. It takes a sacrifice. I want to read something to you I found in closing. Take sacrifice if Sister Lori and Kenny and Miss Shelby would come and Ronnie. Eric Feldman speaks of meeting a Chinese couple in Hong Kong while traveling to China. A friend took me down a narrow alley to a second floor flat to meet a man recently released from prison in China. I knew I would be pressed to carry Bibles and literature on my trip, but I was hesitant to try to mask my fear with rationalizations about legalities and other concerns. A Chinese man in his 60s opened the door. His, his smile was radiant, but his back was bent almost double. He led us to a sparsely furnished room. A Chinese woman of about the same age came out to serve tea. As she lingered, I couldn't help but to notice how they touched and lovingly looked at each other. And my stare apparently didn't go unnoticed, for they soon were both giggling. What is it? I asked my friend. Oh, nothing, he said with a smile. They just wanted you to know it was okay. They're newlyweds. I learned they had been engaged in 1949 when he was a student at Nanking Seminary. On the day of their wedding rehearsal, Chinese communists seized the seminary. They took the students to a hard labor prison, and for the next 30 years, the bride-to-be was out only one visit per year. Each time flowing Following their brief minutes together, the man would be called into the warden's office. You may go home with your bride, he said, if you will renounce your Christianity. Year after year, this man replied with just one word, no. I was stunned. How had he been able to stand the strain for so long, being denied his family, his marriage, and even his health? And when I asked, he seemed astonished by my question. He replied, with all that Jesus has done for me, how could I betray him? My friends, listen to me this morning. After all that Jesus Christ has done for you and done for me, how could we do any less than to want to take those three tools that God has given us to establish us, to share the riches of His glory. If you're here this morning, you established, you praise God. Just give God the praise. If you're here this morning and you're in the process of becoming established, still praise God. Still praise God and be patient with the Word of God. Be patient in prayer. Be patient in your suffering. And just wait because God knows best. God knows when it's your time. 
If you're here this morning, you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You come. Come and experience the greatest thing that you could ever experience in all of this life. And that is to be set free from the sin that you're enslaved by. Jesus died that you could be set free this morning, today. 1 Corinthians 6, today is the day of salvation. Come today. Whatever your need might be, Jesus Christ can meet it. If you'll just come to him as we stand and sing what number, brother? 317, would you stand please?